Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about logarithmic equations. Any equation that has a log in it would be a logarithmic equation. We can use this equivalence property to help us solve logarithmic equations. So b, x, and y have to be real numbers, and b, the base of our log, can't equal 1. If that's the case, then if we have a log with base b with an argument x equal to a log of base b with an argument y, we can say that the arguments x and y are equal. So remember, the base has to be the same, and then the arguments are the same. In example one, we're going to solve this log equation using the equivalence property. Notice here that we have natural logs. On the left-hand side, we have two terms. We need to get this down to just one log term. To do that, we're going to use that product property of logs. That tells us that the arguments are actually multiplied together. And the right-hand side will remain the same. Now we have one log on the left equal to one log on the right. So we can set those arguments equal to each other. On the left, we have x times x minus 8, and that'll be equal to the argument x minus 20 on the right-hand side. Let's distribute on the left, and we have x squared minus 8x equals x minus 20. Let's subtract x and add 20 on both sides. And you'll see that we have x squared minus 9x plus 20 equals 0. We have a polynomial. So, to solve this for x, we're going to factor that polynomial. For our factors, we're looking for the two numbers that multiply to 20 but add to a negative 9. I'm thinking negative 5 and negative 4. And we have our variable x. Now you use that zero product property, and you'll get that x equals 5 and x equals 4. Now, we're not done. We need to check. This is probably the most important step when you're solving these log equations. You have to check those answers. And what we're checking for is a restricted value. You can't take the log of a negative number. So if we go to check x equals 5, we would have the natural log of 5 plus the natural log of 5 minus 8 equals the natural log of 5 minus 20. Look at what happens in these last two natural logs. 5 minus 8 would be taking the natural log of negative 3. And 5 minus 20 is taking the natural log of negative 15. We can't do that, so x equals 5 is not a solution. Now check x equals 4, and you'll see the same thing happens. Those last two, you end up taking the natural log of a negative value. So our solution here is actually going to be the empty set. We end up tossing both x equals 5 and x equals 4. Now recall that logs and exponents are inverses of each other. So these next examples, we're going to learn how to solve a log equation by using exponential form. And to do that, we're going to follow these five steps. Look at example two. Our first step is to isolate our log on one side of the equation. That's already done for us. There's nothing multiplied in front of the log, and we just have the one log. Step two is to use the properties of logarithms to write the equation in the form log with a base equals a constant. We have that too, right? There's no extra values inside. We don't have a power property to apply. Nothing's multiplied. 
Now we're going to convert in step three. So we're writing the equation in exponential form. We're converting from log to exponent. So remember you take your base, raise it to the power of that answer, and it's equal to the expression. So four to the power of negative one equals x. Four to the power of negative one is one fourth. So x equals one fourth. Step five. I just told you this, step five is probably the most important. Check that potential solution in the original equation. You're really looking for a negative. Are you trying to take the log of a negative number? Because we can't do that. Here we're not. We're taking the log of one-fourth. So our solution is one-fourth. Now look at example three. Our first step, remember, is to isolate that log on one side. Our log is by itself on one side. We want to use our properties to get our log as just the log of some value equal to a constant. So we're going to divide both sides by 8. We have log with base 4 of w plus 6 equals 3. Now we're going to convert it to an exponent. So remember, base to the answer equals the argument. 4 to the third equals w plus 6. 4 to the third is 64. Now we're solving for w, so subtract 6 from both sides, and you have w equals 58. Last step is to check this value. So 58 would go in for w, we end up taking the log base 4 of 64. It's not a negative value. So our solution in solution set notation is 58. Let's look at example 4. Remember, we want to isolate the log on one side. So we have two logs here. Let's add this one log on the left to the log on the right, you'll have your constant 2 equals log 7 of x plus log base 7 of x minus 48. We have our constant isolated and we have the logs alone on the right hand side, but we want to get this down to just one log. So we're going to use that product property. So remember the product property, we keep our log and we keep that base. They both have base seven. And our argument is the two arguments multiplied together because we had addition between the two. Now, I'm gonna leave that argument how it is. It looks a little messy, but we can leave it because our next step is to convert. You might want to rewrite this as log base seven of x times x minus 48 equal to your constant. In case you're used to writing this e of taking your base of the log raised to the power of the answer equals your argument. So seven to the power of two equals our argument x times x minus 48. Now let's simplify everything here. We have 49 equals x squared minus 48x. Let's subtract 49 from both sides. And notice that we have the polynomial x squared minus 48x minus 49 equals zero. We can factor this. We get x minus 49 times x plus one equals zero. Our solutions would be x equals 49 and x equals negative 1. Remember that most important step? We need to check those answers. So we're looking back at our original. If we substitute x equals 49 in, do we ever end up having an argument that's negative? No, we don't. So x equals 49 is a possibility. What if we plug in x equals negative 1? Well, this very first log, we'd be taking log base seven of negative one. We can't do that. 
So our only solution here is 49. Okay, remember when we talked about finding the inverses of a function? If not, that's okay. We're going to go through the four steps of finding the inverse. And remember that the inverse of a logarithmic function is going to be an exponential function. Step one of finding the inverse of a function is to get rid of that function notation and replace it with y. So y equals the log of x plus 7 minus 9. Step two is to swap your x and y variables. So we're just rewriting this as x equals log of y plus 7 minus 9. They just changed positions. Step three is to solve for y. So here's where we're going to use all of the properties we just went through and our steps of solving logarithmic logarithmic equations by converting them to exponents. We want to isolate that log first. So let's add 9 to both sides and we'll have x plus 9 equals log of y plus 7. We're going to convert this into an exponent. Remember a log that doesn't have a base explicitly written is a base 10. So base 10 to the power of x plus 9 equals y plus 7. The base of your log raised to the power of your answer equals the argument of your log. Now, remember, we're solving for y. So to get y alone, we subtract 7 from both sides. And we'll have y equals 10 to the power of x plus 9 minus 7. We solve for y, the very last step of finding the equation for an inverse function is to replace your y with that inverse function notation, f inverse of x equals 10 to the power of x plus 9 minus 7. In our very last example, we're going to solve this equation. We're going to write our solution set with the exact solution and then we're also going to give an approximate solution of four decimal places. Okay, notice we have two logs here. First, we want to isolate those logs. So we're going to move this constant to the other side. We'll have log of x squared minus 4 log x equals negative 3. Notice our second log is being multiplied by 4. We can use the power property of logs and rewrite that as log of x to the power of 4. Now, remember when you have a log with a base and another log with the same base and they're being subtracted, that is your quotient property. So you keep your log and you write them as quotients. x squared divided by x to the fourth equals negative 3. Now we can simplify that argument. This is the same as 1 over x squared. Okay, we have the argument for our log as simplified as possible. So now we want to convert this into exponent. Remember if there's no base, it's a base 10. So our exponential form is going to be 10 to the power of negative 3 equals 1 over x squared. Now let's get rid of this negative exponent. 10 to the negative third is the same as 1 over 10 to the third. Now because our numerators are the same, our denominators have to be the same. So 10 cubed has to equal x squared. Well, we want to know what x is. So we'll take the square root of both sides. And you'll have x equals the square root of 10 cubed, or 10 times 10 times 10, right? And the square root of 10 cubed 
is equal to 10 square root of 10. There's our exact solution. And if you input this into your calculator, you see that this is approximately equal to 31.6228. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll check out some of my other math tutorials.